This is a fourth video in a multi-part tutorial on how to acquire daily weather data for a specific place, calculate monthly, annual, and annual averages, and calculate heating and cooling degree days. In the previous three videos, we looked at how we could find daily weather data using Weather Underground and then download that data onto our computers and import it into Excel, where we then were able to calculate the monthly mean temperatures for each month of the year. In this video, we're going to look at how we can calculate heating and cooling degree days for each month and then for the year. Um, heating and cooling degree days are basically rough measures of the energy needed to either heat or cool a space to make it comfortable. The basic assumption is that daily average temperatures below 65 degrees Fahrenheit require heating, while daily average temperatures above 65 degrees Fahrenheit require cooling. Uh, so for example, if we look at a particular day and we say the high temperature was um, 60 degrees and the low temperature for that same day was 40 degrees and then we calculated the average of those two days we'd find out that the average was 50 degrees so that would be the daily mean for that day to calculate the heating degree days we basically subtract that from 65 and we'd say there were 15 heating degree days for that one day now, if it happened that the next day uh, it was, let's say, 65 and 40, so it got a little warmer, and we took the daily mean again, so I'm just going to copy the average formula here down, slightly higher, higher average mean, and again we calculate the heating degree days. Now, notice that this has a different heating degree days than the first day, so it's 12 and a half heating degree days. But we understand this by adding the two values to say that for those two days, there were a total of 27.5 heating degree days. So you notice that the heating degrees are cumulative. If we wanted to know the heating degree days for the entire month, we would need to calculate the heating degree days for each day of that month and then add all those numbers up. So simple enough when you have only two days, but when you have a lot of days, that looks like a lot of work. So how do we do this in Excel? Well, once again, we're going to resort to using an array formula to calculate these values. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a column in the Salem Weather 2013 worksheet um, that calculates the degree days. So I'm going to add a column right after the mean temperature column by right-clicking on the E column and choosing Insert. And I'm going to add this column and call it degree days. And in that column, I'm going to take the um, value, the mean temperature for a given day, and subtract 65 from it. Okay. So I see that I have a negative number, which means that the temperature here was below 65, which in implies a heating degree day. And I'm going to take that formula and I'm going to copy it down the column by grabbing that little box in the lower right corner and pulling it all the way down to the last row okay and all the values are copied over now again notice that the negative numbers tell us that those are heating degree days but when we see positive numbers those tell us that those are cooling degree days because it means that the uh, mean temperature was larger than 65 so we have a real rough and quick way of seeing the difference when we're looking at heating degree days versus cooling degree days all right but the key is that we're going to have to uh, sum up the cooling and heating degree days for each month of the year. So going back to the monthly workshop, uh, worksheet, we're going to add a couple columns into our table. And the first one we're going to do, we're going to call HDD for heating degree days. And the second one we'll call CDD for cooling degree days. All right, so we're going to use an array formula again to calculate this value this sum of heating degree days for January. But we're going to use a slightly more complicated array formula and this one's going to use multiple criteria in order to add up the values that we want. Because as you, see, as you saw in the previous worksheet, um, we have a column that's got both negative and positive numbers. The negative numbers are the heating degree days. We don't really care about the positive numbers yet. Secondly, we also need to make sure that we're only adding up the appropriate month's numbers. So if we only want January numbers that are negative, then we, we essentially have two criteria. So the array formula that we're going to use is called SUMIFS, S-U-M-I-F-S. 
And again, it starts like all formulas with an equal sign, and we type in S-U-M-I-F-S, right? The S meaning it's going to have multiple criteria. We open up the parentheses so we can enter in the um, arguments for this formula. And unlike the average if that we used previously, the first argument in the sum ifs array formula is the range of the values that will eventually be summed, or the column that contains the values that will be summed, which is the degree days one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Salem Weather 2013 worksheet, and I'm going to go to that degree days column, right? choosing the first cell in that column with a value, E2, and then scrolling to the bottom of that column, which is going to be E366, holding down the shift key and then clicking once with the mouse so that all the values are encircled in that running border. Okay. The second uh, criteria, uh, or the second argument rather, in that um, in this formula, separated by a comma, is going to be the column that contains the um, values, the, the criteria that distinguish the values that we want. So again, this is going to be the one where we use the month number column, the one over here. So I'm going to select the B2, which is the first cell in that column, and then once again scroll to the bottom to B366, hold the shift key down, click once with the mouse. Oops, I did that last time too. Okay, so so you have all of the values in the B uh, column are in within the running border. Okay. Then I'm going to enter another comma in the formula, and this time I'm going to indicate the value that will tell Excel which records to select. And so like last time, we're going to use that month number column that's in our monthly table. So I'm going to go back to the monthly table for a second. I'm going to choose this cell, which is A2, and that indicates which number to look for in that uh, column of numbers, right? So in this case, we're only looking for January, which should be the ones. Then I put another comma here. And I have a separate criteria range, and this is where I'm going to tell Excel to only look for the moment at the negative numbers because we're only interested in heating degree days uh, in this particular column. So I'm going to go back to the Salem Weather 2013 again, and I'm going I'm to choose the degree days column values starting at E2 uh, and then all the way to the bottom E366. Okay. Right. And then another comma in the formula. And here I'm going to put in the criteria that I'm looking for. So this is a little different now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Excel to only find the negative numbers. And so the way that I indicate that is by putting in an expression of, you know, basically find numbers that are less than zero. So I'm going to, put, I'm going to start it off, though, this time with a quote, and then the less than sign, and then zero, and then end quote and then I close parentheses. Okay. So again, what's going on in this formula is the first argument is a reference to the column that contains the degree day values that we're going to essentially add up, the, the column that contains those values. The second argument refers to the month number um, column in the Salem weather, and it's going to use that column to look for the uh, values that we're interested in for that, that indicate a particular month. And then there's a second argument here where we look back at the degree days and we say only find the ones that are less than zero or basically negative. Now as we did previously, we need to enter in dollar signs in front of the letter and number references here so that when we copy this formula later on, we won't you won't try to move the formula to new references. So I'll put a dollar sign in front of the E, in front of the 2, in front of the E, in front of the 366, and scroll over here, in front of the B, in front of the 2, in front of the B, in front of the 366. We're not going to put it in front of the A2 because, again, we do want that one to change as we move down the column uh, so that it grabs the appropriate month number. Over here, we're going to put it in front of the E, in front of the 2, in front of the E, and in front of the 366. Okay, so this number look, this formula looks right. So again, because it's an array formula, you have to enter an array formula by holding down the control and shift keys and then pressing enter. Okay, and if you do that correctly, you should get a value. 
And that looks right, actually, for January. We get about 1,000-some heating degree days. And we know that the, <coughs> excuse me, the heating degree days because we see that negative sign. Now, the funny thing is that we, uh, we know that what that means, but in future references, the negative sign might look a little odd. So it might be simpler to, simp to ask uh, Excel to only give us the absolute value, essentially to get rid of the negative sign when it gives us that final value. And so we can do that by altering the formula a little bit to add the absolute uh, formula. And that essentially means adding or essentially encasing the sum ifs formula in another formula. So I'm going to click in front of the S of the sum ifs and I'm going to type in ABS which is a short uh, hand or the abbreviation for the absolute value formula. Open parentheses after that and then the far end close parentheses. So the entire sum ifs is inside of the absolute formula. And again, just because this is an array formula, I hold the control key and the shift key down and then I press enter. And now you see the negative sign is gone, but we still have the same value, the same absolute value. Right? So now that we've got that whole complicated formula entered in there, now we just need to copy it down the column so we can compute it for all the other months. And there we go. So we've got heating degree days calculated for each month. And so they're cumulative, right? They're adding up all the heating degree days, all the negative numbers for each day of that month, and that's the sum total of them. And you can see some months have a lot more than others, although interestingly for Salem, every month has some, right? Okay, cooling degree days works in a very similar way. Okay, so in order to copy, or rather to calculate the cooling degree days, we can just simply copy over the uh, heating degree days formula. And so we can copy that over by simply grabbing again that, that little square in the lower right corner of that uh, bolded box and pulling over, dragging over, and it copies over that formula. Now when we do that, we need to change a couple of things. One is that because we didn't enter the dollar signs for this monthly B2 element of the formula, it changed from A2, which, which referred to that month number, to B2, moved it over one, because that's what no formulas do when you copy them over. So we need to actually alter that back to A2, so it refers to the correct column with the month number, so it knows how to find which ones we want. And equally important, we changed the final argument in this, in this um, formula from less than zero to greater than zero because what we're looking for now are the positive uh, degree day numbers from that other worksheet. So those are the cooling degree days. And lastly, because it is a, an array formula, we're going to hold down the control key and hold down the shift key and then hit enter. All right? And then so we have the value, uh, the formula is entered incorrectly. We see the braces. And now we just have to copy down the formula to the remaining cells in that column and then we can see all our values here. And you see that there's only a few months, at least for Salem, in which the cooling degrees, cooling degrees accumulate, right? Because it's only a few months of the year they can get considerably warmer. Uh, and there we go. We have our heating degree days and our cooling degree days. And now that we've got all these values, we can calculate our annual numbers, right? That was the last thing that we were, we were needing. So I'll just add the title here that says annual. And if I want to uh, compute the annual average temperature for Salem, I can just put the equal sign, type in average, open parentheses, highlight all the cells that have values in them, close parentheses, and just hit enter, and I get an average value, and look, it computed also for the both the two. For the heating degree days and cooling degree days, um, it doesn't make as much sense to calculate an average here. We actually want a total. We, we actually want to sum these up. And that's, that's kind of how heating degree days and cooling degree days are significantly different from temperature in that sense. So I'm going to type in equal sum to start a sum formula, highlight all of the cells that have values in them, close parentheses, and hit enter. And then I see how many heating degree days Salem accumulates in the course of a year. I can copy that formula over to cooling degree days and I can see the same for cooling degree days for the year. So now we got we got our monthly means for temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius, the annual mean temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius, we've got heating and cooling degree days, monthly values as well as total annual values. Alright, there we go. And so in the next video we'll look at how we can graph this data.